Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 5th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Rob today wrote a nice uh, diary about a new feature of his uh, router switch firewall backup tool that he has written in PowerShell. He calls it RTRBK and uh, well, the new feature allows you now two diff different backups. So. The basic functionality of the tool is that it will allow you to interrogate uh, different devices and then create a configuration backups. That in itself, of course, is quite useful as Rob says he's using this tool almost uh, weekly. But having these backups, of course, now allows you also to compare the backups and the new version of this tool does support this uh, diff option. This can be, for example, uh, interesting for instant handling and such. If you're looking for changes made to a particular configuration since you created the last backup or also just for change management to basically continuously create these backups and alert you whenever there is a change and then you can verify that the change was authorized. So pretty neat option. Take a look. And like I said, it's written just in PowerShell. And talking about PowerShell windows and such, just a quick reminder that we do have uh, the January patch Tuesday coming up uh, next week on January 10th, which will end support for Windows 8.1 and Windows 7. The extended support will also end on that day. With that, uh, Google also announced that it will no longer support uh, Google Chrome for anything earlier than Windows 10 starting in February. And SHC is a shell script compiler that you can use in order to turn a simple bash script into a Linux executable. Well, apparently uh, this technology is now being used uh, to create a malware. Pretty straightforward, of course, uh, to uh, create a little shell script and then make it not only faster, but also a bit more difficult to analyze by turning it into a compiled ELF binary. ASAC, the ONLOP Security Emergency Response Center, has a nice write-up of such a malware that then downloads and installs a coin miner. The coin miner itself is nothing really that special. It's just XMRIC. And in addition, the malware also installs a good old IRC bot written in Perl. And we've got a couple of vulnerabilities to talk about. First of all, Manage Engine again. Uh, the uh, Zoho uh, tool is fixing another vulnerability, this time a SQL injection of vulnerability in Password Manager uh, Pro. Uh, patches are available for this, uh, but an adversary could use the SQL injection to execute custom queries. And with that, execute queries against any database table used by Password Manager Pro. We have seen uh, various exploits in the past against Manage Engine products, so this is certainly something that you need to patch uh, quickly, and SQL injection tends to be relatively straightforward to exploit once the actual vulnerability is known. And Fortinet's FortiGuard Labs warns that uh, they discovered and fixed a vulnerability in 4080C. This is a command injection vulnerability. It could be used to execute arbitrary operating system uh, commands. However, an attacker needs to be authenticated and needs to have access to the web GUI of 4080C. And Raspberry Robin is making the news again. Initially, uh, this uh, group of malware was discovered uh, by Red Canary. And uh, when it first was discovered, it wasn't actually that uh, obvious what it did. It's a very modular malware. So it first infects the system, doesn't really uh, do much, but sit there, but then has the ability to load additional stages, additional uh, components. And that's the part that uh, keeps uh, changing in uh, uh, 
blog post by Security Joes. Uh, they're discussing uh, yet another new downloader that was added to Raspberry Robin and used in some targeted attacks against the financial sector in Europe. Raspberry Robin is certainly malware that can be considered more sophisticated and advanced. It's heavily obfuscated and as such uh, really difficult uh, to detect uh, in t- at times but on the other hand it also tends to be more used in uh, targeted attacks now another interesting part here is that apparently The attacks originated from a QNAP server. I mentioned QNAP uh, quite a few times before. And we always sort of talk about these simple IoT attacks that are often sort of in that Mirai kind of category. Uh, But among all of the noise that sort of these attacks that just go after weak SSH passwords uh, are causing, among that noise, there tend to be some attacks that are really just building an ecosystem in order to launch these more targeted attacks. So uh, this is always a little bit of a tricky part here. If you have a device uh, that has been compromised or if you're being attacked by a compromised device, uh, can we discard it as sort of a not sophisticated attack just because it's coming from a compromised QNAP device. It may actually be just a device that's sort of part of a sophisticated hacker's attack infrastructure. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks to everybody who noticed that I used the wrong year yesterday. It's always nice to actually hear someone notice mistakes. It uh, lets me know that uh, someone is actually listening. So don't be shy. Let me know if uh, something is happening. Uh, Someone was also asking about if I'm going to do another Raspberry Pi sweepstakes or such. I've done them in the past. The problem right now is it's really hard to get a hold of Raspberry Pi. So that's why I haven't really been doing them lately but I may be starting to give away stickers again. So uh, let me see if I can resurrect my sort of old uh, sticker mailing system. If I can do that, then I'll uh, certainly uh, try to get that going for a while again here at the beginning of uh, this year. Thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.